This is a situation that is not new to us. I just bought the house, so flood insurance didn't kick in yet. We've been really blessed where friends have come over and helped us out. We all try to tell ourselves that stuff is stuff and, and we're safe. They just can't believe it happened. It's like a dream. This one? Well, this is Harvey's wife. Breaking information off the top tonight, the Jefferson County judge has expanded the curfew that starts in less than an hour. The curfew is from 11 p.m. through 5 a.m. The mandatory curfew involves the unincorporated parts of the county, plus the cities of Bevel Oaks, China, and Nome. Now, in the only exceptions, people going to work involved in interstate travel or in an emergency, the fine, $500. Good evening to you, I'm Kevin Steele. And I'm Erica Harris. Supplies and support rolling into Southeast Texas tonight as the recovery from Imelda moves into high gear from schools to the need for more volunteers. We have you covered tonight. We have our team of reporters spread across the area from Winnie to Beaumont to Vider. Hear how Faith is helping people get through this ordeal. We'll also talk to a teacher waiting to return to his classroom. Let's begin in Buffalo, Oaks, where the cleanup has been somewhat slower. Jordan Foster is live there as people start gutting homes and tossing out belongings. That's right, there are roads like the one behind me that are still covered with water. But the people that I spoke with today say that they're staying positive even though they know they have a long road to recovery. We closed in our garage. Bonnie Bird had to wait four days. We had about 14 inches this time. To return home and see the damage Imelda left behind. You can see the water line right there. She lives in Bevel Oaks and this is the second time this home has flooded. She says it's a feeling that never gets easier. I think that if it was myself and my husband it would be one thing but our children are seven and four and that's really the hardest part of it. My daughter asked me when we were packing up and she said, Mama, again, and she knows, you know, it's the hardest on the kids for sure. After Harvey flooded them out in 2017, she and her husband decided enough was enough. They planned to put a for sale sign up Monday, but it turned out to be four days too late. Yeah, I don't know. There are still parts of Bevel Oaks still underwater and cars like this one left abandoned and front yards filled with trash and ruined furniture. It's a cleanup process people here know all too well. It's sad. I mean, it's it's not fun. It's I mean, you have to do it to to get back in your house and get things going again. But this time, Bonnie says her family is moving on for good. We will press forward with uh, moving elsewhere, not for lack of love of the city by any means, but. Um, I'm not going to do this to my kids again. Bonnie does plan on staying in the Hardin Jefferson area, but not sure where they're going to go as of now. Other people that I spoke with today say that they have no plans on going anywhere anytime soon. I'm live tonight in Bevel Oaks, Jordan Foster, 12 News. Well, the tropics have heated up again. The only real concern may be tropical depression. Karen, her long term path is uncertain right now as she churns towards Puerto Rico in the Atlantic. And we're here with Chief Meteorologist Patrick Vaughn in the Weather Center tonight. And Patrick, um, so what do you think? So, well, I think uh, three or so of these systems we're going to be able to ride off. I think we're in pretty good shape. Karen, though, is going to, looks like, in my opinion right now, I think it will come into the Gulf or at least uh, affect Florida as it makes a turn to the left. And uh, after that, it's, again, very uncertain, as you can see. Right now, the one area that is over for the Yucatan, I think you could write that off. High pressure is going to be building over our area, so that will force it, force it on off towards the west. Let's try this. Maybe you can hear me in just a second. This will be moving on off towards the west, and as you can see, uh, we'll be watching these three other systems that uh, are into the Atlantic Basin. Otherwise, it's basically the only game in town is, uh, I think, uh, Karen, as it will be headed off towards the north. Lorenzo is not gonna be an issue for us. It will be a hurricane. And then Jerry is gonna be headed off towards the north and east. But again, it's uh, all about uh, Karen. It's weak right now, but it is being sheared. I think it's gonna get stronger as it heads towards the north, goes right over Puerto Rico. And then it will strengthen. Then the shearing, or I should say, the steering currents collapse. It'll be close to hurricane status. High pressure will build this on off towards the west after that. 
is going to be an issue as far as where it goes in the Gulf. Tomorrow morning looks quiet with temperatures near 80 at 10 a.m. Thank you, Patrick. And as many of you already know, Vider got hit with a lot of rainfall during a meld-up, possibly 30 inches. 12 News reporter William Lanchett is live along Highway 12 tonight where neighbors have come together to recover. Well, guys, just imagine moving back in your home and then a couple of months later, your home get ruined again by another major storm. Well, that's what happened to one Vider resident I talked to today. This morning, was, it was a little overwhelming, probably for the first time. Like a lot of folks, it was a flood Judy Coker wasn't expecting. She lived in this home off of Highway 12 in Vider for more than five years. Judy says she just got her home repaired from Harvey. Now Amilda has forced her to move back out. I never thought this would happen again, especially not this soon. Sheetrock installation and doors have already been removed thanks to help from those in the community. Well, our community is known to pull together. Um, as Vider does and to help one another and that's what we do. Pastor Tony Wilcoxon at Rose City Baptist Church is one of many who came this weekend to help Judy. Wilcoxon says his church was lucky. By about an inch and so we were able to jump out in the community and start helping other people. We get to kind of just put put away the lines, put away the the differences and say hey you know right now it's about taking care of people. Judy says the outpouring of love from her church and the community has humbled her. I have I've never been one to ask for help. Uh, I'm more of a, a, a servant type person. Especially asking for help for a second bath, time. Bath. She's relying on her faith to help get her through this. God built this house. He put it back together. And if he wants it built again, he'll build it again. And if he doesn't, he'll close the doors. Now, the good news is Judy did learn from the first storm uh, of Harvey and did purchase flood insurance. That is good news. Rose City Baptist Church is looking for volunteers this week and this weekend to help gut out homes. We'll have their contact information on our website if you'd like to volunteer. We're live in Vider. Wayne Blanchett, 12 News. Thank you, William. Right now, let's talk about schools struggling to recover in Mauriceville. Classrooms took on anywhere from 2 to 12 inches of water. The district hopes to have students back in class Thursday, but there is quite a bit of cleanup to do. Check out the middle school gym. The floor buckled because of the flooding. The gym floors really do stand out. They illustrate, uh, you know, a, a great deal of damage. That's the tough part is that particular gym floor is only a year old. The goal is to have students return to the middle school in six weeks. Again, classes are expected to start in an alternate location Thursday. Because of the storm, a Beaumont United teacher has been dealt a double blow. We've all heard about the storm damage to BU and how students and staff are in limbo. On top of this, Galen Douglas and his family had just closed on a brand new house two weeks ago, and unfortunately, it flooded too. 12 News reporter Tyler Segerman looks into how he's planning to rebound. For Galen Douglas, this home was supposed to be his new normal. Now, water damaged furniture and most of his stuff sit out front. To make matters worse, the school where he teaches has no idea when staff and students will be back inside their classrooms. Where you're expecting the most consistency in your life is all being taken away from you. Galen Douglas is now forced to start from scratch. This is what it looked like outside his home along Yasmin Dior Street near the Elegante Hotel. I see it coming under the front door, so I go look to the back door before I can even get to the back door. It's coming under the back door. Douglas and his wife, Olivia, just moved into this house less than two weeks ago. Things like our wedding books and, you know, baby stuff from our little girl. And so we tried to move as much stuff upstairs as we can as fast as possible, um, but we still yeah. were not fast enough. Managing a flooded home is one thing, but Galen also teaches at Beaumont United High School. The campus is closed indefinitely due to flooding. So I'm just hoping that the area gets the aid that it needs. It's a concern Galen and his family didn't expect, yet he's ready to move forward. It'll be a lot of work at home, you know, um, just late nights, early mornings until we're back to where we need to be. So just whatever is necessary to, to get my family back on our feet. The Douglas family tells me support from friends and family has been comforting. For Galen, it comes down to one word, normalcy. That's his goal. In Beaumont, Tyler Segerman, 12 News. Thanks, Tyler. Tonight we are hearing a plea from more volunteers to help with folks in Chambers County and help them to recover. Brett Buffington is in Winnie, where the extent of the damage is still unclear. 
Winnie was under a flood warning until this morning, four days after it started raining. Officials here tell me they can only estimate how many buildings were damaged by water because in places they are still waiting on the water to go down. In Winnie, Texas this morning, it was a sight to see when ranchers wrangled this herd of longhorns up a highway headed to higher ground. It's high at the intersection at 1985. It's not the first time they've had to do this. Yeah, during Harvey. Which is making this flood, just two years later, devastating. Yeah, it was high up there. I'm so sorry. At the town's First Baptist Church. I want you to know Jesus loves you and we love you too. The line for help with just the basic cleaning supplies and a bag of food backed up for blocks. We're running out of stuff here in town and, and people are not being able to go back to work so they don't have the funds to, to purchase any of this stuff. Supplies showed up here by the trailer load called a convoy of hope. The church's pastor told us people here need every bit of it. We don't pray for disaster, but we pray for an opportunity to help people who are hurting. And, and here they are. This is a community dealing with being drenched again. Here's the deal. No, nobody likes it. We're not happy to redo it. Drenched, yes. Yeah, come Thank y'all so do this. much. But defeated. Thank y'all very much. Never. 800 homes and businesses flooded. That is the estimate from Chambers County officials. FEMA, they will be here on the ground tomorrow to start assessing the damage here. You might be asking why they weren't here earlier. They tell me that's because they too are waiting on the water to go away. We can't do this. You know, I'm getting too old for this stuff. Sick and tired in Mauriceville tonight, storm victims set out on a long road to recovery. Rescuing man's best friend from the wrath of Imelda. Tonight we talk to the man who showed compassion to a lucky canine next. And many of you have empty mailboxes after the storm. Is Imelda stopping mail from being processed for delivery? Tonight we verify. 